Number two is dua. Okay. Number two is dua. And our pious predecessors, they used to make dua six months prior to Ramadan. You see how when Ramadan is fast approaching, we always say, Allahumma yeah, billigma Ramadan. Allahumma yeah, billigma Ramadan. Yeah. They used to do that six. And you see how now, I was pondering about this yesterday. Now, obviously, we're in the lockdown. But if we weren't in the lockdown, and now we're just over two weeks away from Ramadan, right? All of the Friday khutbahs and all of the lectures now in the masjid would be around Ramadan. So imagine the pious predecessors, they would be doing all of the six months prior to Ramadan. Imagine us now in the UK. In our times, six months before Ramadan is a lecture on Ramadan. Ramadan is coming. The people think it's a bit too early for Ramadan, right? It's six months is left. But this is how they were. So they used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reach the month. They used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them to complete the month. They used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for aid and assistance and tawfiq for the fasting, for the night prayer, for the Quran. They used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for absolutely everything. Because the believers are of different tiers. Some are going to be fasting in the month of Ramadan And maybe their act of worship is just about accepted Other people they're going to be fasting And their act of worship is accepted And Allah on top of that is pleased with it Other people they're going to be fasting And it's accepted and Allah is pleased with it And on top of that they find sweetness in it So the believers are of different tiers And subhanAllah may Allah not to make us from them Some people are going to be fasting And it's not going to be even accepted mm. So these people they will make dua for all of these things That May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to reach the month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who he frees their necks from the hellfire, etc, etc, etc. So dua is the second step. It's, it's, it's a blessing to make dua. It's a blessing for you to be before that even guided to make the dua. So you're guided mm. to even think about dua, that I need to make dua. Then you make the dua. It's blessings upon blessings. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi you know a person that doesn't make dua, that doesn't ask Allah for things, or doesn't ask Allah for things most of the time, etc. This person, in, in other words, they are relying upon themselves because they're not asking, right? Imagine the Prophet wasallam, the individual that has the most knowledge of Allah, that has the most taqwa and fear of Allah, the one who's closest to Allah, most beloved to Allah. He made a dua and he said, Oh Allah, never make me self-reliant. Never make me one that depends on himself. I.e., never make me turn to you, never make me not turn to you, rely upon you. Don't make me by myself, basically, right? And he said, if you do that, you're going to make me fall into shortcomings, sin, uh, mistakes, etc. He mentioned this. Mm. This is Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why he himself, he used to say, Dua in essence is worship. It's so comprehensive. Look, it's a beautiful act of worship. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He loves that. He loves the individual to turn back to Him and raise His hands. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam narrated that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He said that... If you raise your hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah jalla wa ala is shy to return them back to you empty-handed. That means he'll give wow. you what he wants.